वेलकम टू द टू द पॉइंट्स सोशल इश्यूज लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर स्टार्टिंग ए न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज सोशल मोमेंट्स एंड दिस इज द इंट्रोडक्टरी चैप्टर फॉर दिस एंड वी विल बी लुकिंग एट द वेरियस सोशल मोमेंट्स इन द पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया सो द एम्फोसिस मेजरली इज ऑन पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया एंड हाउ दे हैव शेप्ड अप आवर सोसाइटी so what exactly is a social movement now when we are talking about society we have uh, discussed that society is nothing but an organization that is coming together of people with a specific purpose now when we are talking about a social movement it is basically a movement to change or protect a existing structure of organization of people and that purpose or it is an aspiration for a particular purpose or to retain the existing purpose so what constitutes a social movement generally a group of people identify with a ideology say for example if a particular set of people believe in a value in the pre independent era the entire um, national consciousness has evolved into a demand or a value of complete independence from the british we are just considering this as an example so can we actually say that this is a social movement to an extent yes but largely it is a political movement but if we have to pinpoint at the social aspects of the national independence movement we have to talk about the 19th century cultural reform movements and also the 20th century caste reform movements uh, which characterize this social movement so what are the other characteristic features one there is a need for sustained collective action over a period of time so what does this mean it does not depend on a single person demanding like if you see in the present times a public interest litigation will be filed by a individual and it may or may not be supported by the entire section of the population and if that support is not there this movement will not sustain so it requires a belief in the need for a organizational structure which fulfills a particular purpose for a very long time so there will be shared objectives that is the entire group believes in that objectives or ideology in the west if you take a look at the lgbt movement that is the movement to protect the rights of the transgenders uh, and their um, human rights this is a example of how they have a shared objective or an ideology to protect the rights of the transgenders and also it depends on the degree of organization so what do you mean by degree of organization it can be an informal uh, simple network where people come together and discuss it for the sake of awareness or it can be an ngo which works in the interest of that or it can be a pressure group which pressurizes the government to legislate in its favor and finally the highest form of organization in a democracy is a political party so all this come under degree of organization so what is the aim obviously to bring about a change or sometimes even maintain a status quo say for example if an authoritative government is actually trying to change the democratic principles of the country then there can be a social movement to retain this democracy this is what happened uh, during the emergency so that is the good example of how social movements can actually maintain a status quo if whatever principles that we are following right now is good enough if you go back into the history you take a look at the example of raja ram mohan roy through his uh, brahma samaj so he campaigned against sati and the defenders of sati formed dharma sabha and petitioned the british not to legislate on this issue so there can be two sides social movement does not mean that only a set of population which uh, believes in a progressive ideal or a progressive uh, idea 
ओनली दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट सोशल मूवमेंट और वॉट एवर इज विद इन दी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल लिमिट दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट सोशल मूवमेंट इज नॉट दी आइडिया ऑफ सोशल मूवमेंट द पॉइंट दैट वी हैव टू टेक अवे इज देर शुड बी ए कलेक्टिव ग्रुप विच बिलीव इन एन आइडियोलॉजी एंड ट्राइज टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द चेंज टू वेरियस मेथड्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक वी हैव डिस्कस्ड सो दैट इज द फंडा recently there was a black lives matter campaign uh, in the united states this happened in the backdrop of a black person who was murdered by a policeman in broad daylight this black person's name was george floyd and this was captured on a camera actually and was um, aired across the world this shook the very foundations of the democratic credentials of united states of america so even in the presidential elections of 2020 it became a huge issue so you have to understand certain features of this social movement taking this as an example black lives matter is a campaign that was organized with a sense of belonging and a group consciousness what does this mean sense of belonging obviously all the blacks felt that they were being discriminated against and there was therefore a group consciousness that is they associated with this movement and also all the democratic people who actually believe that uh, blacks should also have rights uh, equally on par with the whites they also supported this movement so it's not like just the blacks supported it even the whites supported this and therefore there was a group consciousness a sense of belonging to an idea and a group consciousness so when such kind of movements if you take a look at history they create an entirely new social economic and political order so most of the social movements tend to develop new set of ideas what can this ideas be in the case of indian constitution we have utilized this to actually lay down the values that we celebrate in the preamble of the constitution that is equality justice fraternity liberty all these principles which were laid down in preamble of the indian constitution they are an example of these new set of ideas after social movements so again the emphasis is on collective action rather than individual action sometimes social movements can be unorganized also one example for this unorganized movement is the spontaneous arab spring so there was no formal organization there was no leader it happened in the year 2010 in the arab countries in a demand for democracy after a fruit seller was burned to death so this is a primary example of an unorganized movement which actually blew out of proportion they can be peaceful in nature or they may even turn violent for violence arab spring is yet another example even if you take a look at the non cooperation movement of 2020 the reason why mahatma gandhi stopped this uh, non cooperation movement was because of the chauri chaura incident which turned very violent if you take a look at the contemporary example you have the situation of hong kong where china is actually subjugating the democratic credentials of hong kong hong kong till 1997 was a uk territory thanks to the imperialistic nature of the british empire before the 21st century so after 1997 there was a treaty that till 2047 hong kong will remain independent and after that there will be a decision on how hong kong will be integrated with the mainland china but recently the democratic system has been subjugated it is sidelined and china is actually trying to impose its authority on hong kong even in that context you see a actual movement in support of the retention of the existing system in hong kong so there are various theories associated with the causes that uh, trigger this social movements first one is the deprivation theory imagine a and b are at two different platforms so there is a perceived gap between a and b now unless and until 
the state intervenes to fill this gap b will always remain in a state of deprivation and this causes unrest this unrest will actually culminate into a social movement which can even turn violent so if you take a look at the reasons for naxalism their ideology is because of this deprivation they believe that the section of the population which has uh, been historically denied the rights that they deserve the access to financial resources or any resources in general for improving their life they are being denied that so they believe that if uh, they pick up arms to channelize this unrest is the only way in which this relative deprivation can end however we also have to remember that all such instances of relative deprivation need not culminate into a social movement then you have what we know as the mass society theory if a section of the population is continuously stigmatized let us take the example of transgenders across the west we see movements uh, of people like transgenders demanding rights for themselves what this essentially means is that they have been denied social ties for a very long time and subjected to stigma so the social movement gives members a sense of belonging and access for societal participation so that is one example of mass society theory it is actually propounded by a person called william conhauser then we have something called the structural strain theory so what does this exactly say so a set of people come together and they share a concern that whatever existing status quo that is not going to help the society so we need to change it and this change will be given a direction so the structural strain theory says that this desire to break the status quo and to move in a direction that they believe in they mobilize a certain set of people come up with a solution and uh, explain the structural strain that the present system is inducing and talk about the structural conduciveness that is how we have to design our society to attain the objective or the change that we desire the next one is the resource mobilization theory so people may join for all the reason noted above and also because of social ties with the existing members so what does it mean exactly let us go back into the history of 1857 revolt we have had various uh, sections of the society coming together to support the cause of sepoys this was even dubbed as the first war of independence however it had a limited result one reason is the amount of resources available even though the rebels suggested that they had enough resources and mobilized enough people over a period of time for want of both financial as well as human resources this uh, particular movement has actually been subjugated by the british through violent means so the extent of opposition within the larger society is also uh, a point that we have to consider for this we have to understand let us take for example the present issue of sabarimala so sabarimala temple issue actually supreme court said that women can enter into this temple but the maximum section of the society in that region or across the country are sometimes not okay with that judgment so even that can trigger a social movement so that is to maintain a status quo so these examples can be utilized to understand this various theories of social movement and the evolved theory is the new social movement theory which talks about how the emphasis will turn towards the quality of life now nobody thinks about quantity they think about quality 
so if you take a look at the it hubs or the places where it professionals reside the cost of living is actually a bit higher than what you would notice in the rest of the city this reason is because of the fact that they focus on quality of life since money is secondary for them everybody gets decent amount of salaries and their emphasis is on quality of life so they use various uh, structural methods to mobilize the uh, desires that they have so for example you can take a look at the use of social media with the advent of social media it has become ubiquitous that is everybody can voice their opinions in a very convenient manner and demand a better life so the new social movements arise in response to the expansion of mass media and it so we can talk about this new social movement theory in the context of a post industrial society where social media has actually democratized the platforms for expressing opinions before the advent of social media we would have to depend on the traditional uh, print and media we have had letters to the editor in newspapers so they they were uh, one channel for expressing our opinion and not many people took the effort to write to the newspapers so this is one more example for a post industrial society so what are the various stages in a successful social movement firstly you have the emergence that is a small set of uh, people will believe that there is a widespread dissatisfaction and they try to mobilize this people together so it is a stage where there is an emerging uh, public awareness on certain issues and a small unrest within the public and after that they will actually emerge as a movement and the actual job of organizing this and strategy for moving out or reaching out to the public who believe in this cause begins here the third one is there should be a stage of bureaucratization or a leadership there is a need to identify a leader for the movement and the rest of bureaucracy to successfully carry out the campaigns and agendas laid down in this social movement the agenda of the social movement and after the purpose is filled there is a gradual decline they lose their importance and influence and if the goals of the movements are fulfilled they simply indicate a success so for failure also there are certain reasons at this stage the reason why a lot of uh, social movements decline after even bureaucratization and making it a successful setup is because poor leadership or loss of interest among members so let us again go back to the history during the 1930s mahatma gandhi has actually decided to uh, end the dis- civil disobedience movement because there was a belief within him that people are tired and they might lose interest despite the long term objective of independence so it is during this phase gandhi ji has actually transformed the leadership into a social one with his harijan movement and it is during this phase itself the congress has participated in the 1937 Uh, legislative council elections so the the change in the strategy has actually given way or ended the actual civil disobedience movement of 1930 however it did come back in a new format with individual satyagrahis that is a different issue i'm just using this example to explain why decline happens so this brings us to the conclusion of the various aspects that we have to understand about the social movements in the further parts of this lecture series in this particular chapter we'll be discussing about the various movements that we have witnessed in the post independent era so that's it for now thank you